Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastyshoots.com. In Photoshop, one of the most creative tools is the brush tool. As you create in Photoshop, you will find the brush tool being used in all sorts of creative scenarios, such as drawing, painting, erasing, refining, creating textures and masks. In this tutorial, I will be introducing you to the brush tool, demonstrating how it works and giving you some tips on what to look out for when using it. So to follow along with this video, you will need to open this document I have prepared especially for this tutorial. This document can be found in the Essential Practice folder in the Project folder. Now you can download this project folder for free, the download link is in the description. So with the project folder open, click Essential Practice, open the Brushes folder and open the Brushes PSD, then you should have something that looks like this. Now along the way, I will be mentioning some useful shortcut keys, which you can find in the description and on the shortcut key page in the project PDF, which you can also download in the description. So in this tutorial, I will be referencing and using specific panels. To follow along, you will need your brush panel and your brush presets panel visible. If you cannot see your panels, simply come up to window and select the brush and the brush presets panel from there. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to drag them out of my panel set on the right so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Notice that currently these panels are greyed out. These panels are currently inactive, and that is because I currently have the Move tool active. So the Brush tool can be found in the main menu about a third of the way down. Now you can either select the Brush tool from the menu or use the keyboard shortcut. By pressing B on the keyboard, you can quickly activate the Brush tool. It's important to mention at this point that if you wish to use the Brush tool, you will first need an existing layer to work on, or create a new layer for your new brush stroke. In this case, if we look in the Layers panel, I have this layer called Practice Layer. Currently, this is a transparent layer, and we know this because we can see the grid texture in the image thumbnail. So I'll select this layer for now. Now upon pressing B to activate the brush tool, notice the brush panels have now become active. So before we look at using the brush tool, I'm going to first touch on what these panels are, so you understand how these will work later. So the first panel here is the brush presets panel. Now this panel is like your pencil case. This panel contains a variety of brushes you can use. The nice thing about this panel is that it's a good visual reference, giving you a good idea of what effect a particular brush will make should you use it. When you install Photoshop, it will come with a wide range of brushes pre-installed. As we scroll down in this panel, we can see the variety we have on offer. To activate the brush, simply select one. To change the size of the brush, you can simply toggle the size on the top of the panel like so. So with the brush tool active, you will notice the mouse cursor change. With the brush tool active, it will display what type of brush you have currently selected and what size, in the form of a thin outline. This here is giving you a good visual indication of what you're about to use. For example, I'll select a hard round brush and set the size to 40 pixels. If I move my mouse into the white area, the canvas area, I can see what size the brush is, represented by a circle outline as the cursor. Now I'll come over to my foreground color and make sure this is black. Then, if I click and draw quickly, I can see that the mouse cursor shows a good representation of what the result will be. I'll just press Command-Z to undo that. If I come back into the Brush Preset panel and push the size up to 200, then move my mouse cursor into the white area, the canvas area, we can see a bigger outline. This is Photoshop telling me that this is how big the brush is going to be next. So I'll click and draw, and we can see that's a bigger brush. I'll just press Command Z to undo that. This time I'll come into the Brush Presets panel, I'll scroll down and select a different kind of brush, a chalk brush. I'll push the brush size up, move my mouse cursor into the canvas area. Here we can see a very different brush from the last. If I click and paint, like so, we can see the effect that brush has. So the first thing to remember with the brush tool, when the tool is active, 
the mouse cursor will always display the brush and the brush size you're about to use. This comes in very handy. So next, we have the brush panel. Now this panel works to customize a particular brush we have selected. Up in the top right here, we have a reference to all the brushes contained in the brush presets panel. And over on the left here, we have quite a variety of settings we can toggle to change the nature of a brush. And we shall be getting into that a little later in this video. So it's important to know that these two panels go hand in hand with each other. Notice, as I select a brush from the brush preset panel, we are loading these details into the brush panel below. Now, when using the brush tool, it's also important to keep an eye on the control panel. So at this point, I'm going to close the brush preset and the brush panel so we can no longer see them. Now, I have just demonstrated how important these panels are to choose a brush and potentially customize a brush. But we can also do this up in the control panel very quickly and easily. We don't necessarily need the two panels visible at all times to do this. When you have the brush tool active, you will notice the control panel will display a variety of details regarding the current brush selected. As a beginner, in the control panel, the main things you need to pay attention to are the brush preset toggle. Here we can see at a glance which brush we have selected and at what size. Now, if we wish to change the active brush, we can do so swiftly by clicking on the drop down. From here, we can choose any brush we like, just like in the brush presets panel. On this occasion, I'll select a hard rounded brush. Now also, in the menu, we can tweak the brush size. I can either click and drag the handle or click inside the value and type in a precise value. Next to this on the control panel, we have an icon that looks like a folder. Now, if we click this, this will activate the brush panel. As mentioned earlier, it's this panel we can use to toggle the current brush settings. I'll close this for now. We will be coming back to this shortly. The last big one we have to pay attention to is opacity. When using the brush tool, it's crucial to pay attention to this. If this is set to anything other than 100%, when you draw, you will have transparency. Now this can be very useful depending on your task. So remember, when using the brush tool, always keep an eye on the control panel, and it's from there you can customize your brush settings quickly. So now let's take a look at this exercise document I have open. Here I have a number of brush strokes I have previously created in various colors. We have stamps, a freehand stroke, a straight line, a pointed line, and a custom brush. So let's have a go at creating these over on the right. This will be a simple exercise just to get to grips with the basics of using the brush tool. So first we are going to create these stamps. So here we have six simple stamps of various brush sizes. So we are going to start with the hard brush set to 20 pixels. Now before you use the brush tool, you will need an existing layer to work on or create a new layer for your new brush stroke. So I have just been demonstrating the brush on the practice layer in the layers panel, but now I'm going to create a new layer specifically for each brush type. So with the practice layer selected in the layers panel, I'll just press command shift N to create a new layer. I'll call this stamps and click OK. So I'll press B to activate the brush tool. I'll come up into the control panel, click on the brush preset panel and make sure to select a hard brush. Now I'm simply going to click into the size area with my mouse and type 20. Then I'll simply press enter on the keyboard. So now I can see I have the right brush. I can see the mouse cursor displaying the right brush size in the document area. Next, I'll make sure the opacity is set to 100%. Now I'm ready to come over and click on the guide. But before that, I want to change the color of the brush. Notice in the menu, the foreground color is currently set to black. Now up here in the top right, I have a color palette. And this will be where we can source our color. So I'll press I on the keyboard to activate the eyedropper tool. I'll select the blue color from the sample. And now my foreground color has been set to blue. Now I'll press B again to activate the brush tool. In Photoshop, when you set a brush, then use other tools. When you come back to the brush tool, Photoshop will remember your last brush. 
So here we are back to our hard brush at 20 pixels. Excellent. So next, I'm simply going to come over to the guide and click once. Easy. By clicking once, we will create a small solid circle as the brush is a hard rounded brush. So next, I'm going to create a stamp at 60 pixels. Now this time, instead of coming all the way back up to the control panel, if I right click on the mouse, up will prop the brush presets panel. This is a quick way to select or edit a brush fast. So in the pop-up menu, I can type into the size value and type in 60 pixels and then press enter. Now, unless I change anything else, all my other settings should be the same as before. And my foreground color is still set to blue. So I'll just click on the next circle in the guide, easy. Next, I'll change my brush size to 150. Again, I'll right click and type in 150, press enter and click on the guide. And there we have three stamps in various sizes in the hard brush. So that's how you can quickly change the brush size to create various size circles. Very simple. So next to this hard brush sample, we can see we have a different kind of brush. With my brush still set to 150 pixels, I'll right click and change the brush to a soft rounded brush. I'll come over and click on the next guide. So in Photoshop, we also have this nice soft feathered brush. This brush can come in very useful for soft brush effects, glows and gradient effects, all of which we will be learning about later in the course. Now, unlike the hard brush that is solid throughout, this feathered brush fades to nothing from the center of the circle out to the end across the radius. The hard rounded brush and the soft rounded brush are the two basic brushes. So I'll right click change the brush to 60 pixels and again quickly click on the next guide. And lastly, one more time, but this time change the brush to 20 and click on the end like so. So now I have these brush stamps I just created on a single layer. If I press V to activate the move tool, I can click and drag these around like so, easy. So next I'm going to look at using the brush tool in a freehand way. So the foreground color is still set to blue. Now I'm going to press I to activate the eyedropper tool and I will select the purple up in the right to set my foreground color to the new color, like so. Great. So currently I have the soft rounded brush still active from the previous task. Well, that's okay, as for this task, I want to use a 50 pixel soft rounded brush. So I'll right click, change my brush size, and next I'll attempt to draw a freehand stroke over my guide here on the left. But before that, I want to create a new layer. Now, I don't have to create a new layer. I could simply continue to draw on the stamps layer. But if I do so, I will not have the flexibility to move them around separately. So I'll press Command Shift N to create a new layer. I'll call this new layer Freehand and click OK. So with my new layer created, I'll click and draw a freehand stroke over the guide. If I press V, I can again move this layer around separately. Nice. So up until now, we have looked at how the brush tool can create stamps and be used in a freehand manner. Next, I want to demonstrate some techniques with some keyboard commands. So next we have a straight line here. In some creative instances, you may need to create a straight line when using the brush tool. We can do this rather easily. So first, let's set up the brush. For this, I'm going to use a hard rounded brush set to 20 pixels. I'll press I to use the eyedropper tool to select the green color. I'll press Command Shift N to create a new layer. I'll name this straight line. Okay, so this time, I'm going to first place my mouse cursor at the start location, this being the beginning of my guide here on the left. Now I'm going to press and hold shift on the keyboard and then click once to put down a starting point. With shift still held on the keyboard, I'll move my mouse cursor over to the right and click once at the end like so. Upon click, I will draw a straight line. So by pressing and holding shift on the keyboard, when using the brush tool, you can click once, then click again, 
and wherever you click it will join them seamlessly. Okay, so for the next task, I'm going to use the same principle but take it one step further. So I'll change my brush colour to red, I'll change my brush size to 5, I'll create a new layer and call this points, and come over and focus on the new task. So this time I'll move my mouse cursor over where I would like to begin, I'll press and hold shift just like before, I'll click once to start, move my mouse to the next point and click again to create a seamless line. This time I'll keep the shift button held down on the keyboard, then I'll move to the next point and click once more, and the line will continue seamlessly. I'll still keep shift held down and continue to click once again and again until I move to the very end like so. So by holding shift, not only can you create a seamless line stroke in a straight line, but you can continue to click and draw straight seamless lines however long you like. Simply release shift to finish. So the last task I would like to demonstrate and for you to have a go at is a custom brush. Up until now, we have been using rather simple brushes to experiment with simple stroke effects. Now in Photoshop, you can customize a brush quite drastically. So I'm going to create a new layer and call this custom brush. I'll use the eyedropper tool to pick the orange from the color reference to change the foreground color. I'll press B to activate the brush tool. And I'm going to keep the brush size set at 20 pixels. But this time I'm going to click on the folder icon next to the preset up in the control panel. Upon click, this will activate the brush panel. Now remember earlier, I mentioned this is where we can customize the settings of a particular brush. So let's take a look at how we can customize a brush. So at first glance, we can see there are a lot of things we can toggle. For this example, I'm first going to start with the spacing. So I'll click and drag this like so. As I drag left and right, this will toggle the smoothness of the stroke line. Now, if we keep in mind that a brush is made of a simple unit and replicated seamlessly to create a single line, if we alter properties such as the spacing, we will begin to treat each unit separately to create an interesting outcome. On this occasion, I'm going to push this right up to 350%. Now on the left here, we have some more categories we can toggle. So I'll click on Shape Dynamics, I'll push Size Jitter up to 70%, I'll push the Angle Jitter up to 70%, and I'll push the Roundness Jitter to 70%. So these will randomize the size, angle and roundness of each individual unit in the brush. Next, I'll click on scattering. Now I'll push scatter right up to 960%. I'll toggle the count to three and toggle the count jitter to 20%. So here I have toggled the potential value to scatter each unit and how many units will be generated. So with that, I'll come to my guide, click on the left at the start point and draw to the right. Upon release, I can click and draw back over the left on top and draw more. Here we have this interesting effect. So by toggling the various brush settings, we can get some interesting results. Now, should I wish to keep my settings for this brush to use again in future, I can simply save the brush settings. To save a new brush, I can come back into the brush panel come to the top right of the panel and click on the top menu icon. From the drop down, I'll select new brush preset. Upon click, a menu will appear where I can name the brush. I'll call this brush scatter brush and click okay. Now, if I come into the brush presets panel and scroll down to the bottom, we can see the new brush. So this will be here to use again and again in future. Excellent. So that is a brief introduction to brushes in Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to practice those exercises and explore more brushes in the brushes panel. Now in Photoshop, not only can you customize a brush, but you can also create a custom brush from scratch. If you would like to learn how to create a custom brush, you can watch another video where I demonstrate this. Simply click the screen. You can also find the link in the description or in the course PDF document in the additional training section. In this video, we learned about the brush tool and how we could use it to create.
In the next video, we will be seeing an example of how the brush tool can be used to refine and manipulate images in Photoshop. In the next video, we will be looking at techniques to erase and manipulate images in Photoshop. See you in the next video.